Max, 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 a dragon and these things. Here's the complete 2024 January 1st wave LEGO Ninjago review, thanks to LEGO for sending this. The three new Rising Dragon Strike gimmick sets have an equally matching gimmicky box that clearly stands out when compared to the common squared stuff. Inside you'll find these highly juniorized dragon builds, which are literally all the same except for colors and small build changes for Arin's one, where the wings are connected differently and the wing claws are smaller when compared to Kai's and Nia's. The dragons are built onto this large golden piece to which the wing builds are attached, the dragon heads that house dragon cores inside, the same ones from the last Ninjago wave, and then this tail piece of swords. It's quite flexible and should be able to handle some slamming as it's the piece that allows the dragons to shoot against the enemies from the wolf mask army. We will be seeing a bunch of these guys in the sets, wolf mask warriors, wolf mask claw warriors and wolf mask guards, each having their unique type of weapons, but the same double sided head elements, revealing they're actually humans. As for the ninjas, Arin's outfit is the same from the last wave, except for the head piece that changed to the standard looking ninjago balaclava. Kai and Nia on the other hand got all new outfits that look great with the golden accents printed on torso and legs and dual molded on the balaclava. These Rising Dragon Strike products are good play sets with cool characters and play features that kids will enjoy for sure. Priced at $10 for an average of 25 pieces each is kinda terrible, but people don't really buy into these gimmick sets for the great builds and Lego pieces, so there's that. The other $10 set in the lineup, Jay's Mac Battle Pack, is far better value for my adult eyes and puts Star Wars battle packs to shame, carrying 4 minifigures with no repeats and a mech for a fraction of the price. We have a claw warrior and a guard here for the wolf mask army and on the ninja side of things Jay has a new outfit, in line with the previous two euros, minus the golden detail on the headpiece and shoulder pads, but the highlight here has to be Master Laloid with his white robes befitting his new title. Jay's mech is probably one of the smallest mechs LEGO ever made and it kinda works, but he clearly skipped leg day. Jay sits inside like so, there's clips in the back for his katanas and the mech is surprisingly poseable and holds itself up really well due to the small size. Large sword on one hand, the shooters on the other and that's about it. Can't really ask for more out of a $10 set and I like this one a lot more over the Rising Dragon Strike ones. Next up there's the 4 plus Arin's battle mech set that has repeat characters already seen in the video, Arin and a wolf mask warrior. There's this very basic katana holder and a slightly larger mech for Arin to ride, less poseable than Jay's mech due to the use of these juniorized large leg elements and dark green angled bricks for the arms, which kinda fit the age marking requirements. Large katana on one hand and a spinning blade on the other which is always fun for play and fight scenes against the wolf mask warrior simple looking glider. It comes with adjustable wings with spears and a tile shooter under the seat, but doesn't scream flying object due to the bulky middle section. Take this off and now I can kinda see it working. My favorite thing of this set however is the crystal cave, using these beautifully colored opalescence elements revealing a supposedly magic mallet inside. There's some foliage here that falls off way too easily during play, a printed shield element at the top with a menacing looking dragon and the cave itself is just this rock element recolored in dark blue. While the price of $16 for this 100 piece set isn't great, stays in line with other 4 plus releases across the portfolio but packs lots of play and different elements, making this a decent and somewhat affordable gift for kids. But now it's time for for the real mech, starting off with Cole's Elemental Earth mech. 
comes with a wolf mask warrior and then Cole, also featuring the new style of decorations as the other ninjas so far, with his dual molded balaclava being black and orange, matching the mech real nicely. Plenty of room for him to sit in there, almost too much room even, but I love the bulkiness of this one for some reason. You can almost imagine the ground shaking as this beast is walking around. The feet and legs seem a bit rough as there's lots of exposed studs and a clip for Cole's katana. Legs are fixed and so there's no knee joint and the knees themselves have this new to me element covering them. There's side studs to this piece, so it was also cleverly used for shoulder pads. Hips rotate, but the arms are also fixed at the elbow, which again is a bit of a shame, honestly. And this will be the same for all of the major ninja mechs, in case you're wondering. The forearms made orange and transparent, almost lava-like, do look nice though, and each end has just two fingers and a Technic pinhole, to which we can connect this oversized hammer. Less joints mean bigger stability for play, which I can get behind, and $20 for this 235-piece Ninjago product is actually decent, though the fight is really one-sided for the poor wolf mask warrior. The other $20 mech is Sora's Elemental Tech Mech, a seemingly worse deal as far as the piece count goes, but with a few extras for play. This time around, the wolf mask claw warrior has some sort of flying device with his black wings, made with some claw and blade elements attached to his back. Sora, on the other hand, is a similar figure to Last Wave's version, but has a mouth scarf and airpiece instead of her cat here's balaclava. Her mech is a lot slimmer and taller than Cole's, with the primarily white, coral and dark blue color scheme, with the accents of gold here and there. Poseability, as I mentioned before, is exactly the same as the previous mech, further limiting by those knee slash shoulder pieces now used here on the hips, kinda getting in the way of the legs moving. With no shoulder covers here, this whole area is a lot more exposed, so to say, and doesn't look as nice as Cole's or Kai's mech in that regard. Sora's katanas can be placed on the mech's forearms, and there's also these blades here for some extra detail. And on top of that, there's a spinning blade weapon for one of the mech's hands, and a double blade sword of sorts for the other, making this one heavily armed. There's also this small tree build here, matching the style of the one from the crystal cave, and has this transparent bar element that, while not shown anywhere, feels like the place to attach the flying wolf mask claw warrior. Comparing the $20 Lego Ninjago Max from this wave, despite the lower piece count, it does feel like you're getting more out of your money with Sora's elemental tech mech, though as far as looks go, I still prefer Elemental Hearth Mech. Which leaves us with Kai's Elemental Fire Mech. This comes with yet another Wolf Mask Warrior and a slightly different Kai with no shoulder pads and regular colored headpiece. But then there's Jordana with a different outfit to those of the Wolf Mask Army, but still in brand with the blue, purple and silver detailing with the shoulder fur piece and a blade weapon. Zane is also new to this set with an outfit that matches those of the ninjas previously shown in the video. The Wolf Mask Army now has a mech of their own that I actually really like, except for those extremely long arms. It really is weird, and unless they wanted this to also be able to pose on four legs, it makes no sense to me. I personally feel like replacing these elements with regular plates with ball joints for a more grounded look. The claw element used looks nice, and so do these black pieces for a furry look with a tail to match it. But Kai's elemental fire mech is the highlight here. A balanced look between Cole and Sora's mech in terms of shaping, and in my opinion the best out of the three. Again, similar poseability as the previous two ninja mechs, with some extra details for the flames that can be moved around a bit, as well as the shoulder slash knee piece, which in this case doesn't feel like it's meant to go anywhere. The hands have the three fingers, same as Sora's, and comes equipped with a giant blade weapon. And I guess now may be the time to talk about the fact that you can actually mix and match parts of the mechs as advertised in the 
the backs of their respective boxes. As instructed, we are meant to take the torso and arms off, leaving us with plenty of combination options. Maybe the reason why the arms and legs are fixed and lacking joints, since kids are supposed to be taking these apart often to explore different combinations. Less joints means a lower chance of the models breaking where they shouldn't. You can get some interesting hybrids out of these three sets, and you can go as far as taking the legs and feet apart for even more customization options. It's definitely nice having the opportunity to do so and a smart move by LEGO to advertise it on the boxes so kids ask for all three mechs from their parents. So all in all I'd say Kai's Elemental Fire mech priced at $30 with 4 minifigures and over 300 pieces is a solid LEGO deal. And finally, for the last set of the review, the LEGO Ninjago Egalt the Master Dragon. The only proper dragon for the entire wave, which is quite unusual as far as Ninjago releases go. This one has 5 characters included, the most out of every other set. Lord Raz makes a comeback after last wave's Dragon's Rising releases, with a unique outfit not shared by any other villain, but similar headpiece as the ones previously seen in other instances of the character. The other villain is Cinder, the elemental master of smoke as seen in the product page, featuring the exact same outfit as Jordana but with distinct head and hair pieces. As for the ninjas, we got regular Laloid, exclusive to this set as of now, with matching outfit and a semi-exclusive Nia, that while keeping the legs and torso from the Rising Dragon Strike set, has both the balaclava and dual molded hair piece that looks really cool with that band wrapped around her head. As for Sora, cool minifigure, but nothing we haven't seen before in the previous wave a couple times. And before showing the dragon build, there's this little scenery here, matching the ones from previous sets, and as disclosed in the product page, features a magic mallet and the gong of shattering, items that will probably make a lot more sense when the new Ninjago season airs. Egalt, the master dragon, kinda nails it with the master look, given how it has that Asian styled hat above its head, the black and white color scheme and all of the beard features and fur stickers in the front legs. Mind you, the only set of this entire video that has stickers, which was awesome to see. The dragon head top element is however printed, while these symbols on the neck and the decorations on the torso mount for the ninjas are also stickers. The head poses real nice with lots of different joints same with the tail as expected. The legs are fixed in these angles but can still move plenty at the shoulders and hips, so to speak, while the feet are connected with the small ball joints to be posed accordingly. There's this katana that the dragon can actually wield at the tip of his tail, which to me, not as familiar with Ninjago lore, looks like a first. The front claw design with the use of the modified bricks and a few other pieces looks great, and something that I enjoy a lot more over the use of pre-molded claw pieces like the ones in the back legs. And it wouldn't be a dragon without the expansive plastic foil wings, held on by ball joints for poseability, with some holes to emphasize the dragon's old age, finished with a few golden blades for details. I like it a lot, and compared to recent dragons done for the theme, it comes second behind the awesome elemental dragon from the dragon's rising first wave of products. While every other set featured in the video video was somewhat decently priced, not counting the gimmick sets. This one, probably due to the plastic foil wings, cost $70 for a little over 500 pieces, which isn't great at all, but stays consistent with the pricing of the Elemental Dragon set I talked about earlier that also features foil wing elements of its own. There's technically no repeat of characters on the ninja side of things if you were to get every set, with the ones that do have doubles being different enough from each other in some way. As for the wolf mask army, doubles of the foot soldiers are okay, since this is supposed to be an army after all, while the generals and Lord Raz only show up once in the January 1st wave release, so good overall selection. 
There's lots of mechs, too many even, and just one dragon, so the way when compared to previous ones feels a bit lackluster. But the $10 battle pack is an awesome set, and the $30 Sky's Elemental Fire mech is great on both value, play and minifigures, even more so if you get one of the other two mechs for the customization possibilities. Subscribe for more LEGO reviews with far less mechs in them, and should I do the tiny plants or the giant? friends mention next.